I hope you're doing well. I'm so pleased today to uh, have you here in this live interview. Thank you. It's my pleasure um, Thank you for having me. Yeah, the pleasure, the pleasure is mine. So as I was saying to uh, the people watching, it's going to be an interview about you and what you do uh, mm -hmm. on social media and about learning English since um, this is the topic of our lives. We speak about uh, ways and methods to learn the English language. So, first of all, of course, um, let me give you the chance to present yourself. Tell us, for the people who doesn't know you yet, who is Sophia? Well, my name is uh, Sophia Jantlet. Um I was born and raised in New York City. Both of my parents are from Marrakesh, Morocco. I mm -hmm. currently live in Texas. I have a twin brother, and I teach English here on Instagram. Amazing. Teaching this is two years now here. How many years have you been teaching? Uh, two years here on Instagram. Two years. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Do you teach just online, or do you also teach in real classes? Uh, just online. I've started teaching on Instagram when people ask me to. So um, I've always been interested in the English language. I love anything that has to do with it. I've always loved English courses. Um, I'm a native speaker of the English language, but I've taken yeah. advanced literature, um, advanced research paper, writing courses like uh, advanced seminar and things of that sort. It's always been something that's interested me. I love reading, writing, all of those things. Um, so I started an Instagram account and Actually, when I first started, I didn't really know what I was going to have content-wise. Um, mm -hmm. I did just sharing my life. I was sharing my life with my followers here on Instagram. Yeah. And I was speaking English. So it's people who ask you to. So it's people yeah. who ask you to start teaching, right? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I was teaching English. I mean, I was speaking English a lot on my page. So some of my followers started asking me to start teaching English here on Instagram. So I started doing that and a lot of people really liked it and I enjoyed teaching it. I enjoyed helping people and I've always loved the English language in general. So I do enjoy teaching it to others. So it became the main focus of my content. And now that is why I'm doing that is basically Amazing. the main focus of my yeah. content. Yeah. And people, of course, liked it. Like, um, we, um, um, I can see that, or I can tell that most of your followers are Moroccans, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah or you do true. have some other followers from other Arabic countries. Yes, yeah. The majority of my followers are from Morocco, and I do have followers from other places as well. Um, but yeah, that's why uh, they originally started asking me to teach English in the first place. The majority of the people who were following me were from Morocco and they were people who wanted to learn English. So that is how I really started. And, you know, they asked me to do it. And now that's yeah. how I'm Amazing. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Sophia, you, you were raised and born in, you were born and raised in USA. Mm -hmm. How is your relation? to Morocco like do you come here most often or oh well, yeah I do come to Morocco a lot I come over in the summers a lot and I've actually uh lived in Morocco for a year as well I was doing online school there and then I came back here again and I've been back and forth a lot throughout my life um I love Morocco I'm actually uh mm. in the process of thinking about moving back there right now oh yeah um, yeah yeah uh, it's really great. I mean, it's good here as well too. Um, but I do. Parents are parents now are in um, in the U.S. Still in the U.S. You live uh, with your my parents, mom right? Is in the U.S. right now. I do live with my mom. Yeah, and my dad. He's uh, in Morocco at the moment. Uh, he's just getting everything. And so yeah. Um, I love having family there. Uh, it gets a little bit boring here in the U.S. with the fact that we don't have all of those family gatherings and things to do in Morocco like we have in Morocco. Um, so, yeah, it is really fun there, and I'm excited to go back there. Amazing. And you're really considering it, like, maybe next year you'll, you'll move here. Yeah, yeah, inshallah, yeah. We're, um, we're serious yeah. about it. We're Why not, yeah. 
got lots of like. Do you visit other other places in Morocco, or just you go to Marrakech since uh, um, I've your family is there? I've been to Casablanca, uh, Sidi Bouzid. Uh, I've been around a lot. Most of the places that we really go the most, I'd say, are Marrakech, uh, Casablanca, and Sidi Bouzid. Like those are the cities we're really at amazing. The most so Sidi Bouzid just um, just here. Uh, I live in El Jadida, so it's. Um, Oh, near really? oh that's cool. yeah. interesting yeah. it's it's a great beach oh yeah for sure yeah that's why we go there we have yeah. like, the beach house there for the yeah mm -hmm. nice amazing place. so back to um sofia back to uh, the english language like you are a native speaker and um you have uh, of course you do speak some arabic like uh, or how is your arabic yeah um well i do speak and write in arabic um, I actually took mm -hmm. Arabic classes growing up because I did go to an Islamic school for my youth. So that's where I learned how to read and write Arabic, even though I was here in the U.S. It was an Islamic school in New York City. Oh, um, yes. And as for like uh, Darija, um, I do know how to speak and uh, I do understand Darija. But when I'm gone from Morocco for a long period of time, it does get a little bit rusty, especially speaking. Um, but yeah, that's the thing with languages. With languages in general, you really have to speak every single day to, um, yeah. to learn and like to improve and just to even keep it up. Because if you don't speak it for a long time, you forget. Um, yeah, so I guess because you didn't use um, you didn't use to use Arabic in at home with your parents, right? You? Uh, no, not really. You used mostly just English, English, yeah. Uh, yeah, we mostly yeah. just speak. Sometimes I go like over a year with like barely talking any Darija, you know. So. Uh, it gets yes. rusty at times, and that's the thing with learning languages, uh, with English too, you know? I mean, you have to yeah. practice every single day. All the languages, yes. You have to be consistent with it in order to retain the information and in order to continue to remember everything that you know, and especially in speaking. I feel like reading uh -huh. and writing is easier in a sense, um, even if you don't practice for a while. With speaking, it gets hard to like get out what you want to say just because it's really heavy on the tongue if you don't practice it every single day. Um, yes. Uh, so it's really important to practice speaking in any language that you want to remember or any language that you want to learn in and any language that you want to improve in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, see, I've been following you for a while and... Um... I've seen some of your videos, like, what do you like to focus on in teaching English? Or what do you think, um, when you teach online, what's the, because I do teach online as well, mm -hmm. and um, I can see that um, teachers who do this thing of teaching online, like, they have different, um, uh, you know, viewpoints oh, about teaching online, yeah, someone or some teachers, they just focus on um, on pronunciation more. Like others, they like to focus on vocabulary. Others, they do focus on grammar. So what do you focus on when, when you teach online? What I focus on most is um, both pronunciation and also I try to include a lot of everyday English. So I try to do um, slangs, um, idioms, and phrases idioms, yeah. in my content as well. Um, because mm -hmm. I feel like uh, like as a native speaker, that is something that I get to bring to the table. Because mm -hmm. especially with those idioms and phrasal verbs and things of that nature that you use in every single day English. That's a lot of things that they won't teach you in schools and they don't teach you in classes. So I feel yes. that is also something that is really important to know about. And it's very useful when talking to native speakers so that you can actually understand what a lot of the things yeah. that they are saying are, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. That's something that I do feel a lot of people have issues with, especially when focusing primarily on just in school learning, you know? Yeah, but also it dep depends also sometimes on um, the person. Like uh, people may need English for different purposes. For sure, yeah. Um, yeah. There are some, some students that do not prefer to study um, idioms and um, expressions mm -hmm. and slangs. Yeah. Um, they do want academic language so but yeah. I think personally I have the same point of view actually is that we should focus more on the language on the natural language like how mm -hmm. people in the US speak how people mm -hmm. in Britain speak this is yeah. what we should study actually yeah yeah okay. and you you don't teach like grammar something um, it has to do with language I rules 
I do do those types of videos sometimes. So occasionally I'll include like uh, sentence structures and things of that sort. Um, those rules mm -hmm. are uh, generally uh, important to learn so that you sound like you're talking correctly. Um, yeah, and also like you said, it's important to also when you're learning a language, first identify your goal. So what yeah. is the main purpose that you want? Why do you want to? Yeah, like what are you yeah. doing for? Um, that's also a way to motivate you. Like if you have a goal and you have a reason why you're doing something, if it's that you want to work for a company or if you want to be able to talk to native English speakers in normal day-to-day -day conversations, that is going to motivate you to work towards that goal. And it also helps you in where to put your focus. I feel like yeah. you have to generally um, have like a concept and learn generally about English, but you want to have a focus of something that you spend the most of your time on based on the goal that is specific to you and the thing that you want to learn for. So, you know, for example, um, if someone wants to go into the mechanical engineer industry, um, yes. they want to work for like an international company in mechanical engineering, it would be of more use for them to focus on those terms than, yeah. you know, perhaps it would be... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the vocabulary. struggle would be, nice. will be more, um, yeah, with, with vocabulary, more than um, sentence structure and those yeah, things. And like, yeah, and like the vocabulary of a mechanical engineer versus um, the vocabulary of other things like it would be more beneficial for them to focus on that like fields vocabulary than it would be for example to learn all the names of spices you know so really um, yeah. you have to know what your focus is going to be what you are spending the most time on additionally to um, you know the general English that you want to develop you have to yeah. have main focus especially when you've gotten to a point where you understand the basics and you really just want to improve to do what it is that your goal requires of you in learning the language. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, um, Sophia, it's like uh, one question that I like to ask all the teachers that I invite. Um, you know, you, you told me you started two years ago teaching online. And, uh, haven't you noticed that um, there are more people interested in learning English nowadays more than before, especially yes, with the sure. growing use of the internet. Uh, yeah. uh, yes. Just two years ago, we had the pandemic and people started to use the internet more. Yeah. And it's like people have, have discovered or have realized that it's time to learn that language because it's widely used and um, yeah. the majority of the world use it. Mm -hmm. That is very true. I it, actually, I actually yeah. started at the pandemic time that is when i started when the yeah. pandemic officially started that's when i started my whole instagram the account. same and it's actually the same for me i started before but the pandemic time is where i yeah i did most of my videos and oh, really? lives and, yeah very, yeah i mean it's very important to learn english in this dn age uh, most of the information that you will find that is important is in english so those research articles, those really good books, um, a lot of that is in English, especially since English is the number one most yeah. widely like, used language in the world. So all of those really good sources of information are going to be in English. So if you do not know English, you have a limit because you are limiting yourself from having access to all of those sources of information. And of course, if you want to go into business, if you want to be international, you have to be knowing the most widely used language in the world, which is English. Um, so yeah, and if you want to travel, if you want yeah. to travel, English is going to be of use to you because you get to talk to all those people in different countries. And if you want to have it socially, um, you can have access to a more wide variety of cultures and different kinds of people. And you can yeah. meet people from different walks of life. So yeah, there's definitely um, many uses and many reasons yeah. why learning English is so important in this DNA. age. Yeah, of course, like uh, the world now is smaller than before. And uh, like they say, the world now is a small town, like a small town. So, like we are so close to each other 
because of the uh, because of the internet, because of social media, especially. Um, so if we learn English, it's like we give ourselves the chance to communicate more, to uh, yeah, to interact more with the with the world. So um, learning English is important, and um, let's start now talking about how people should learn English, or what is the perfect way, or let's say the the most efficient way to learn the language. I would like to ask you, Sophia, or not just me, because also the followers are asking the same questions about uh, about this, especially beginners. The problem is with beginners; like they don't know where to start. Beginners with no background in the language, with no vocabulary, with nothing at all. Just like they have in front of them a lot of um, resources, a lot of videos, a lot of teachers, um, but they don't know how to start or what to start with. Like, what would you say the best way to start with or the best thing to start with, in your opinion? Mm, well, it depends on how beginner um, are we talking. So, are you saying like completely nothing or like a general yeah language? nothing yeah nothing. like nothing okay. people with no knowledge in the language like they don't know how to formulate a sentence they know they do know some words but yeah well i would say um well i would say first start off with um getting a like structured course or an app that helps you with that there are many mm -hmm. apps available um one that i've actually shared here on this page recently it's called elsa yeah and it's really, really it's called cool. what's, what's it called alsa speak it's an yeah. amazing Could you type app. it in the comments please yeah i will really ask about I this one second can you just write yeah. it it's good for um all levels i'll talk about it in a bit let me just write it down so you can you can go there and um like uh, speak to people maybe or just uh, um, learn basic of the language it has a courses. wide variety of uses um and it actually has different levels that you can select from so mm -hmm. they have a beginner level option they have an intermediate level option and they have an advanced level option and it's a really great app because you can um, even schedule that amount of time that you want to spend every single day on it um, they'll give you an option where you can select the time that you want to start from and it will ask you do you want to do 10 minutes 15 minutes mm -hmm. 14 and then you can have that every is it for free day. this app or you have to pay something okay so basically uh, a lot of the features in it are free um, and you'll mm -hmm. have access to a lot of things that are free but if you want to have like more access and you want to have like access to every single thing that is there there is a membership but you can also have access to plenty of things for free on there so mm -hmm. yeah and um, it helps you with a wide variety of things they have lessons for pretty much anything you can think of. They have pronunciation lessons. They have, um, they have like a sentence, everything. And they also have a section where you can talk to communities. So for the people who want to talk to people and text people there, it's also good. Mm -hmm. um, and it just covers a huge variety of aspects of learning the language. And it's a really great app to use. So it's one that I... Yeah. Amazing. So uh, it's we have an app, like we can choose an app and start working using this app to improve our many pronunciation depends on our goal. What else should we do? Like uh, in addition to the app, like some people it may not work for some mm -hmm. people. Yeah, I mean, especially those who do not do not use their their smartphones a lot. Yeah, it definitely depends on the person because um, yeah. everyone has different styles of learning. Um, but yeah, the main thing, especially if you're a beginner, is you really want to have something that's like structured and something that you can follow through. So you really have to have a set plan. Maybe you can take a course, um, have like personal courses with a teacher and um, have something that teaches you all of those basics. Uh, you can search up YouTube channels for that um, and different channels that are uh, selectively for beginner speakers. And um, that should help with that. But yeah, especially with beginner speakers, you really want to have some sort of standardized learning that you can tackle one thing at a time and work your way up with that, you know? Yeah, I see. Like um, some people, they do recommend textbooks. Like, would you recommend textbooks as a um, start? I would for beginners to start with, just to get like a... Yeah. 
general um, information, but it should not be the only source of information because um, textbook yeah. English is different from how people actually speak day to day usually. So, you know, especially if you're learning for um, conversational purposes, you want to have other sources, you want to watch movies, you want to listen to podcasts, um, read books in English. And listen and surround yourself with the language to develop yourself from all aspects and make sure to listen to things of native speakers talking. Um, and yeah, just really surround yourself with the language and don't completely rely on textbooks and things of that sort. Yeah. But it definitely is beneficial, especially when you're first starting to get like that general standard information. Yeah, maybe just like the textbook is for um, to guide you, uh, yeah. help you like you start with what, for example, like uh, I like to tell my students to follow some, um, to follow a schedule like yeah. this week or this month, I'm going to focus on vocabulary related to food right. or to um, uh, maybe to clothes or something. So this way the textbook is going to give you like units and each unit has a theme or something. But as you said, shouldn't be just the only thing you you you're 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 going to focus on like you can watch movies you can um podcast listen to music something like this this will also help you out surround yourself with english this is one of the um the most useful yeah. ways to learn english but i think um, practically speaking some people they found it hard to do like uh, how do i surround yourself surround myself with english like uh, uh, my parents don't speak English uh, at work or where I study at school. No one there speaks English. So how to do it? Do you have I something like, practical like to surround yourself with English? Um, when I say surround yourself with English, I don't mean like literally. I mean, um, mm -hmm. yeah. in the sense of even technology, technology makes it very easy to do so. Instead of watching um, movies or TV shows in your language, just watch them in English. If you're watching YouTube videos anyways, watch English speaking YouTube channels, read English speaking articles and things of that mm -hmm. sort. It doesn't necessarily have to be quite literally surround yourself as in like in real life, because a lot of people don't have access to English speakers in real life. Um, but many different apps and many different um, sources are available online and you can surround yourself in that sense. Um, read books in English, like I said, articles, um, the movies, TV shows, listen to English songs, uh, watch your social media in English. So that's more of what I mean by that. Yeah. So like try as much as you can, as hard as you yeah. can to do it, to surround yeah. yourself with English. Yeah. Uh, your phone settings in English, your TV in English, the things you watch on YouTube in English, um, mm -hmm. Instagram people you follow in, they should use English or something. Yeah, that's that's one of the greatest way because um, your mind when or your brain when it hears a lot of English uh, around, like uh, you get yourself into English and you start searching and uh, looking for things in English. And that's uh, that's great. So, uh, Sophia, I'm just going to see because I received some some of the questions from the people in the story. Um, we can just answer some of them. I think we already answered some of them. Uh, let's just look for new questions. Uh -huh. Which is the best thing? Okay, this is a question about uh, vocabulary. Uh, he's saying, what is the best way to improve vocabulary? Um, well, um, like, you uh, wanna... surrounding yourself with the language will help with that, of course. Um, and you can also, if you want to improve yourself in specific aspects, um, I like to use uh, Quizlet when it comes to um, improving vocabulary um, with synonyms, mm -hmm. and things like that sort. Um, no one knows every single word in a language, and even native speakers can improve yeah. their vocabulary. Um, but yeah, you can um, use Quizlet. Have you heard of that app? It's basically... Uh, what, what's it called? Quiz? Quizlet. Yeah. It's really good Quizlet. for like a multitude of different things. Um, it's good mm -hmm. for studying general because you got to make flashcards and it helps mm -hmm. you with practicing individual words so if you want to improve in that sense um and it'll be and like matching games and 
like, you know, things you can do with those flashcards. And that can help you practice and develop your vocabulary. You can even like search up specific uh, subjects that you want to do. And they'll have like flashcards that you could use from there. Or you can also make your own mm -hmm. flashcards. So if there are some specific terms that you have to memorize or that you want to know and you want to learn, you can make your own and just go from those and make them from that Quizlet website. And it gives you a multitude of things to do with them. You can make yeah. tests out of those and it just automatically makes the test for you. You just put those words and the definitions and the translations or definitions or translations. And um, it'll test you on them and it really helps with that. Um, mm -hmm. And it's also important to know how to use words in sentences. So you want to like, again, listen to people speaking in English so that you can um, improve your vocabulary uh, through that. Um, listening to how people use words and reading books can also help. Yeah, it's like that's, um, that's what most students are um, struggling with. It's the, the fact that we do learn a lot of vocabulary, but um, when we speak or when we write, when we want to use them, they, they're just not there. Um, that's the problem. So it, it is good to practice them. Right, like to exactly. use them in sentences. Yes. Yeah, so that you know. How, how can we um, do this? Like, uh, practice these words? Like, you have flashcards you mentioned. Yeah. Um, putting them in a context or in a sentence or something. Yeah, that's useful. Um, you can definitely use those vocabulary words in context and practice through that. Uh, one thing that I do recommend for people who want to practice their English speaking, um, set up a camera and just record yourself talking. And yeah. if you have vocabulary words, you can try to include that in the talk or the speeches that you do in front of a camera. You don't have to mm -hmm. post anywhere or do anything. You just record yourself and listen to the recording so that you can get a better idea of how you're sounding and you can identify your mistakes and you can improve in that. Yeah. And uh, overcome your fear as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so if you are able to record yourself every single day and practice through that, um, that will definitely help you with speaking. And that is good if you don't have someone to talk to. And even if you do have someone to talk to, it's even good to do that additionally, because it provides something that uh, talking to someone wouldn't provide. When you're talking to someone, you are talking to them, but you don't hear yourself. You don't hear the mistakes yeah. you're making. You don't hear how you sound like. When you record yourself and you get to listen to those recordings, you get to hear how you are sounding and you get to hear where you are making the mistakes. And when you know what mistakes you are making, you're able to improve. So it helps you identify where to improve yeah. and how you can improve your speaking skills. Amazing. Yeah, that's um, the, the more vocabulary you have, the more um, expressions you have, like um, the more fluent you'll be. And this is a... Uh, we should actually give uh, give a lot of time uh, studying and learning uh, new vocabulary, especially new vocabulary, how to speak in different situations. There is another question here. Um, he's asking about formal versus informal. And we said in the beginning that some people may need English just to communicate with native speakers or because they want to travel uh, or something. Others, they may use it for educational purposes. So we're speaking here about English for specific purposes, not just for, uh, for one purpose. Yes. So some people, they, they may need formal language. Yeah. There is a question here. He's asking, how do I know? I don't know if you can see the questions on the screen. Can you? Um, I cannot. Yeah, and uh, I will just read the question for you. You say, how can we differentiate between what's formal and what's informal? Is there, uh, is there any website or something we can type the word and it tells us, like, uh, is it formal or informal? Well, if you're talking about specific, um, specific words, there are, like, um, if you search up in the dictionary, I believe it does say informal or formal on top. So if there's a specific word that you're not sure if it's uh, like an informal slang or a formal word, um, searching that up will do so. Um, but yeah, it's extremely important to be able to know um, how to identify between informal and formal vocabulary. Because if you're in an interview, you do not want to use informal language because that can sound very unprofessional. Um, yeah. And in day-to-day -day conversation, um, sometimes it is good to know informal 
language uh, because if you talk too formally, it can sound off at times in day-to-day -day conversation. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's extremely important to be able to identify between formal and informal English. And really, I mean, if you want to search up specific words, it'll usually tell you that. Um, but you also should listen to videos and explanations of specific phrases uh, that you can find online. So you can search up videos that say formal versus informal English. And yeah. again, a better idea through that will help you um, identify which phrases are informal and which phrases are formal. Um, yeah. So yeah, just like research more, do... Um, look up more videos on that subject because it is a very important subject you have to be able to mm -hmm. identify um i think them. also like uh, the, uh, the 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 most dictionaries they have they offer this option like yeah yeah like most of the dictionaries oxford like speak mm -hmm. about cambridge any uh, any dictionary you want hard copy or even uh, yeah, online you can search for the word and you get the definition and if it's a slang word they, they tell you like formal yeah, yeah mm -hmm. they tell you that it's a formal expression for this word or just they give you the synonyms i guess there are plenty of of um, of dictionaries online and um, hard copies as well they can tell you this, yeah. Right, yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, so. Um, this is a question about the, uh, he said, when I talk with someone, uh, they send me like some words with abbreviations, which I'm not familiar with, which I don't know. And like he's speaking about um, texting, when you text someone, Oh, like they use some abbreviation, yeah. Did you make some videos about abbreviation? Yeah, like, especially I have, the yeah. yeah. I've done, like, uh, videos, yeah. Like I said, like, yeah, it was a texting abbreviations video. Have you seen that one? Um, I think I have. That's why I, <laughs> yeah. I talked to you about it, yeah. yeah. It was, like, I think uh, I used BTW, that's by the way, um, FYI, yeah. information. Um, yeah, I mean, again, just you have to look them up. You have to watch videos about that. Those are things that they won't have in textbooks. Um, so yeah, look yeah. those up. Um, and, that's the like, problem. You won't find these in uh, in dictionaries or, yeah, because that's uh, something informal. And people don't use it in real life. They use it in oh, texting. No. Like in real conversation, you don't find the BTW or something. Yeah, it's mostly just used in texting and definitely, yeah. definitely should not be used like in a professional email. Um, in some yeah. Situations. yeah, unless you're like ASAP and... Yeah, I mean, ASAP can be used in an email, but... Yeah, it can be used, yeah, ASAP, yeah, as yeah. soon as possible. So you find it in, uh, you hear it in movies, and uh, I used to hear it in movies, and I didn't know it till lately. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's something that's most used in uh, texting abbreviations. But yeah, just search yeah. up videos. Um, there are a lot of videos available online. Um, that's pretty much, I think, the really the main way that you can find that out, because uh, it's not really likely that you'll see that in textbooks. Yeah. Uh, yes, a question that I receive most of the time is about um, using, uh, when we are beginners or even intermediates, um, some students, they prefer to learn using translation or they like to translate words to understand them. Others, they're against this and they go and look for um, a definition of the word. Like, which one would you recommend more? Uh, you don't use Arabic when you teach, right? Or you do um, use some Arabic. I don't like I don't speak Arabic when I teach, but I do like write down the translation sometimes. Like for pronunciation videos, mm -hmm. I'll yeah. say the word and then I'll have like the Arabic translation on top. Mm -hmm. But I want to make it easy for people to understand. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I would say. Would you recommend it for for, uh, for beginners or intermediates? Just for vocabulary, at least, at least, yes, for vocabulary. Oh, yeah. For beginners, I feel like it is necessary because a lot of times they probably won't even understand the definition of them. Um, but it is important to keep in mind that if you're using Google Translate, it's not always accurate. So yeah. um, sometimes, sometimes it translates, especially with... Translation in general is not accurate most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Because there are some differences between languages. Yeah, if you're using like app platforms to translate, um, you really have to keep in mind those are not always going to be accurate. Um, but yeah, yeah uh, for beginners, it is like uh, probably more preferred to like have translations because there are just some definitions that are going to be too lengthy for someone to understand. I mean, like, for example, if someone doesn't know what milk is, like, you can't really give a definition of milk, you know, um, that would be more understandable than the yeah. word. 
So for businesses like that, it is like um, important to have like uh, translations and um, for people who are in like beginner levels. But if you're in more of like an advanced level and there are more like um, advanced vocabulary uh, that you are using, um, it is probably better to additionally have that definition because Mm -hmm. that definition will give you a more detailed idea of the word that will be more helpful to you, especially if you do understand that because sometimes there is only so much you can do with the translation. There are some words that are just not the same in another language and there are no translations that exactly... um, I think idioms, lately I've noticed that Moroccan teachers or Moroccan online teachers, they do use translation for um, idioms. And I guess some uh, American idioms, they do have some equivalence in, um, yeah. in uh, Moroccan Derija. And sometimes even like exact, um, they yeah, mean the exact same thing sometimes. Yeah. But uh, other times it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. other times. Like, yeah, if you would translate, like, for example, um, it's raining cats and dogs. Yeah. I don't know if it's this one is a British or American. Is it American? Oh, we use that in America. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So if you translate it in Morocco, that would be a total mess and people would be confused. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. There's some, there are some idioms that just really can't be translated into other languages and keep the exact meaning. So definitely in that sense, um, if you're to the point where you're at a more advanced level and you really want to know like those idioms and what phrases and things of that sort mean, um, it will be much better for you to look at the definitions rather than the translations, because a lot of times that will be more accurate for you, though there are times Mm -hmm. that there are like good translations for some idioms, like you said. Yeah, people like to have this um, comparison between the American and British um, English, and sometimes even this... um, this is exaggerated a little bit and people do think especially beginners they do think that uh, we're speaking about two two englishes um, which is not really true no yeah i mean british english and american english are very similar like if you understand british english you're going to understand everything in american english there are just the only things are there are some like very few slangs that are more used in britain than they are Mm -hmm. in But generally, if you know English, you will understand them anyways. And um, generally speaking, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just there are more things that are used, a few more things that are used in Britain that are not as used in the U.S. And the biggest difference is the pronunciation. So that is uh, like the biggest difference. But if a British speaker, like a British English speaker is talking to an American English speaker and they're both fluent in English, they will have no problems communicating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, um, it's just a matter of preferences. I, I most tell yeah. people, like, if you like to uh, to listen to American people or if you like the American accents, that's just a preference. Like, uh, we yeah. shouldn't make it, like, there is a big difference. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes some words do differ, um, like Americans may call this something and the British may call it in a different way, but still it's one English, one standard English. Yeah. You may speak also about Australian, South African yeah, see New Zealand and they all speak uh, English and it's uh, yeah it's just one uh, standard English that we should learn um, so you think that beginners and, and the intermediates as well they shouldn't be focusing more on this people like to hear about uh, I think you do you did you uh, made some videos about uh, American yeah. versus uh, British I would say that it's really um, it's really just I feel like people find it interesting so it is interesting. Yeah, people they like to hear it like they yeah. like to know they are, they are very curious to know yeah. what do British people call this and how do they water water like yeah. they like it yeah when you make like a video like, everyone wants to be oh. yeah for sure yeah it's just um, it's interesting to to know I guess but it's not really very um, essential to know like every like single thing because there aren't that many differences and generally you don't have to like, it's not two different languages. It's the same language. There are just very few differences here and there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, but uh, yeah. the differences that people find interested in learning about. Yeah, amazing. And how do you feel, how do you feel Moroccan students? Um, uh, what do they prefer? They prefer American or British? I think uh, we do prefer American, most of us. 
No? Yeah, I think a lot of Moroccans um, like to learn American English. Um, uh, I heard that some of them say that they have, like, uh, they have a better, um, they're able to pronounce British English more. Some of them say that it's easier for them. But uh, mm -hmm. a lot of them tend to lean towards wanting to learn American English. Is that true? I mean, as, like, uh, like a Moroccan speaker, do you feel like you uh, are better at British English? I don't know if it's um, the people that... I think that for, for me, for me, I, I'm, I've never thought about this. I never thought about, never thought about like, it. Like, preferring British or American, it just came in the way, like, listen. And uh, it's, uh, um, I think that uh, it's mixed. It's Maybe it's what I speak is more American than British, but yeah, I, I never thought about, <laughs> like, imitating the Americans. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But I think Moroccan, yeah, they, they do prefer American. And and there is a reason behind this is that because we like to watch movies a lot here. Oh, yeah. And oh, most yeah. of the movies are Hollywood movies and uh, yeah. people like to watch especially action things. So um, we don't like, and intentionally you feel like you are into American more than the British. But yeah. it's true that some people do prefer British because some people, they found it like, um, I don't know fascinating or something like yeah, that uh, or yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's true yeah just an accent as you said and I, I think inside even the u.s there are different accents right so oh yeah for sure yeah I mean, it's not the same between states uh new york city and like like a texan texan accent and a new york city accent are very different there are people yeah. in new york have like very deep brooklyn accents and mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, there are people in Texas who have those extreme Southern accents. And, uh, yeah, with, uh, it's very different varying between states, uh, especially those people who have it deeper. Um, the more you go mm -hmm. into Texas, you get to hear some of that sometimes with people with, like, really deep Southern accents. Sometimes it'll be, like, in the middle where you won't hear it too much. And then sometimes it'll be a very relevant southern accent um so it's interesting to see those differences yeah yeah okay another another question that i usually get but people when they want to learn a language or, or in general people when they want to do something or to learn any skill in life they want it quickly like you know my concept is called uh, quick english but i don't like quick things in, in in learning i think that slow learning is is best and is is the best thing you can do uh people they like to learn quickly someone is asking here what is the duration necessary to that i need to learn a language that i need to learn english what is the question could you repeat that what is the duration is asking about the time how much time do i need to to learn english should we ask this question first of all um is well, it right to ask this question it depends on what personally i think not um <laughs> Well, it doesn't, I feel like there isn't like a specific amount of time that anyone will, like there's not a standard amount of time that takes to completely learn. It depends on the person. Um, it depends on how many, how much time you're putting every single day. The most important thing is consistency and that you're choosing a uh, like uh, amount of time to do consistently and repeating that every single day. And if you're talking or referring to how long it takes to learn a language, um, it varies depending on the person and how um, you are learning the language. Um, but yeah, like you said, I don't believe that really learning anything can be done quickly. It takes lots yeah. of time, uh, consistency. It takes lots of effort and energy and um, learning it quickly is just not um, so much of a realistic uh, goal. It should be more to um, really have a quality of the language and yeah quality over quantity yeah yeah for sure yeah, yeah. that's that's um that's most students they they quit once they, they start after um, two months or three oh, yeah. they just stop give up yeah. um i think most of uh, most of the time it, the reason behind this is um that we don't find what we expect and we have higher expectations the first time like um you may um uh, you may hire a tutor an online tutor or something and you expect that after two months or three months to have a certain level once those three months are done you feel like you haven't achieved anything which is uh so you quit you stop because um the expectation you had you didn't find them yeah yeah, and I feel like um, that's something that a lot of people uh, struggle with. 
people usually don't see their progress. So they think that they've progressed a lot less than uh, they might actually have. Um, that kind of thing builds up over time. So once you're learning every single day and once you're putting in time to learn every single day, eventually you will learn the language. And it might take away like you are not making much progress, but it's likely that you're actually making a lot more progress than you know that you are and you just are not able to see that because you don't see the small improvements that you are making every single day. And that's yeah. why will give up because they feel like that they're not learning because uh, they don't think that they learned it quick enough or because they didn't learn English in two months but really yeah. I think here it's important to to uh, to set up the set up the goals like what do you want to achieve in uh, in two months for example or what do you want to achieve in uh, in three months maybe so it's very important yeah yeah that and yeah. To have realistic goals uh, that things yeah. that achieved in that amount of time. so if you say for example like in three months i i i will be able to uh maybe like go to the restaurant and order food speak to the waiter um, and you did achieve this uh, you feel that you have improved but if you just leave it like this i want to learn english um once after two uh, two months or three months you feel that you've achieved nothing yeah yeah, that's why it's important to set goals like that. When you set like small goals for yourself, um, as you accomplish those smaller goals, you feel a sense of satisfaction. And that in a way motivates you to keep going. So it's important to set small goals for yourself that you can um, accomplish and feel good about so that you can um, be motivated to keep going. Um, even setting aside like one hour to practice every single day. If you've actually done that one hour you're going to feel like you accomplished something and you're gonna want to keep going because you're going to feel like you're making progress so yeah mm -hmm. that and like what you said those a little bit bigger goals um that you can set and have that to track your progress and um, give you confidence so that you can continue yeah. to improve in the language you feel feel the progress there yeah. is um a question related to translation um the problem uh, we are not native speaker and we were born and raised in an arabic speaking country so uh, there is one system in our brains which is arabic sometimes it's french i guess because most people here in morocco they, they do speak french more than english and th there is this problem with my students in, in school they they translate in their head when they want to speak in english or also when they want to write they say teacher how can i say something like this in Arabic in English so it's it's all the time that they, they they think in English they think in Arabic and they translate or they think in in French and they translate which cause many uh, issues and many problems in their their sentences um, someone's asking here how can we overcome this is there a way to not think in in Arabic um, well, think just in start English. With, uh, small progress and work your way up um, so if you're um, thinking about saying something, instead of thinking in Arabic, think it in English, or instead of thinking the language that is native to you, um, it's okay to not sometimes, uh, it takes progress and slowly switching yourself uh, to that mindset, making a conscious effort to um, slowly try to uh, switch how you think. And you are in control of your thoughts. That is something that you have to uh, realize. So you are in control of that voice in your head. So instead of yeah. having in your head talk to you in your native language, you know, make it into English. Yeah. Like, I want to push it in this chair. Instead of saying it in the language that uh, is native to you, you can say it in English and um, repeat that to yourself in English and just make that conscious effort all the time to have it said in your mind in English and eventually yeah. it will slowly start to come more naturally and it will just slowly become more of your yeah. natural. So it takes time, like in general, it takes time. It's yeah, not... it takes time. I mean, it takes time and it takes a conscious effort to try yeah. And then eventually, once you've uh, progressively made that conscious effort, um, over a period of time, it will come more naturally to you. Yeah, um, it happens most of the time, and it's normal. 
people when they think about saying their age, um, they'll say like, I have 12 years old. Yeah. And they don't say I'm 12 years old, which is uh, the problem of translation. Like right. uh, they think in French, this is J, they think in Arabic. So it's, it's a normal thing. We need to, to be patient and it takes time like yeah. uh, to, to, to do this. I think. Yeah. And you have to practice listening to things in English because that will definitely, yeah. if you get used to hearing how other people say things, that's going to help you register it in your head better because you will get more used to hearing that. So again, with yeah. the movies, the podcasts, um, TV shows, uh, songs, just listen to things in English so that you can become more accustomed to um, the language and so that it can automatically um, eventually uh, come more naturally to you. Yeah have it translated in sure. your head instead of going straight from your native language to that language. Yeah, of course. So guys, be patient and do not seek um, to be quick. Like yeah. uh, being quick is not is not a thing. So like, in, in doing anything, like if you are quick, if you rush things, you will find problems. Yeah. So Sophia, you know, it's been 50 minutes talking. Mm -hmm. Time like, yeah, went so fast, so quick. Okay. Yeah, we didn't feel the time passing with you. It's been a very interesting and fruitful um, interview. A lot of um, we've learned actually so much with you. Thank you Thank so you. much, Sophia. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I appreciate that. I enjoyed being here. Yeah, it's been a pleasure to um, invite you here. And I wish or I hope that we can do a live again talking about different topics, other different topics. Mm -hmm. That would be great, inshallah. It was nice yeah. to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me here. Um, I enjoyed talking here. I enjoyed uh, speaking to you, and I enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was, it was such a pleasure. Any last thing you would like to, uh, to say to the people watching?